In this video, we are going to go through a CFA level one style question on applying the Gordon growth model to a scenario where no dividend is currently being paid. I'm confident that in the exam, you will need to answer at least one question on the Gordon growth model. It's just such an important valuation framework. And the examiner may want to make your life a little bit more difficult by embedding certain challenges into the scenario, such as no current dividend, uh, which is what we're facing in this question, or making you compute the growth rate, G, which is something we'll look at in a separate video. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want you to have a go at. A company whose ordinary stock does not currently pay a dividend is expected to start doing so in four years time, with the first dividend estimated to equal 1.28 euro and growing at a constant rate of 5.1% into perpetuity. If investors require a 7.8% rate of return, the stock's intrinsic value is closest to a 35.11 euro, b 37.84 euro, or c 40.84 euro. Okay, the difficulty that this question realistically poses is one of timing. Many candidates get this wrong because they misinterpret where the outcome of the Gordon Grove model fits on a timeline. Let's label today as time zero, end of year one, two, three, four, and so on. There is no dividend forecast at time one, two, or three. The first dividend of 1.28 euro is going to be paid over here, and that dividend will subsequently grow at 5.1% forever. Let's also write down the Gordon growth model formula, and this is something you absolutely need to know off by heart. The value of a stock at time zero equals the dividend at time one divided by R minus G, where R is the rate of return required by investors and G is the constant rate of dividend growth. Now, in this question, we don't have D1. There is no dividend being paid over here. But what if we replace time one with time four? which is when the first dividend is scheduled to appear. And to be consistent, we should also substitute V0 with V3 so as to maintain that one period gap between the D and V terms. And we now have a formula which we can actually work with. Let's plug in the numbers. This is um, one20 8 over here for D4. Let's quickly go back to the question to check what R was. Here it is. Investors require a 7.8 rate of return. So 0 0.078 minus um, G, which I have already got up here. So um, 0 0.051 or 5.8. 1%. Using my Texas Instruments calculator, 1.28 over open bracket 0.078 minus 0.051 close bracket equals, okay, and I see an answer of 47.407. Now, you need to realize that this is the value at time three, 
which is over here on the timeline. Always remember that the Gordon growth model produces a value which is one period away or one period ahead of the dividend payment plugged into the numerator of this fraction. So the final step is to take this number and turn it into a number expressed as a time zero. And we do this simply by discounting it over one, two, three periods. And this is where many people make the really big mistake of discounting over four periods because they incorrectly place this result on the timeline as belonging at time four. Anyway, to obtain V0, we need to take this result and divide it by 1.078. Please note that we're using the required rate of return to perform the discounting raised to the power of 3, which produces, let's check, divide by 1.078 to the power of 3. It produces 37.84 euro. And if we now check this result against the possible solutions, this gives answer B.